of Katie Petite Designs and today I'd like to show you working with blendable layers. So you've got blendable layers, now what? So let me show you how we're going to get started using the Urban Naturalist Blendable Layers number seven. So I've got my files here that I'm going to be working with and the first thing I want to do is go up to file and go to scripts. Now I'm working in Photoshop Creative Cloud and so it's going to be different in other applications, but this can give you a general idea of what you can do. So we are going to load files into Stack. I'm going to look for these files. So I've got them here in the Urban Naturalist Bundable Layers, and I'm going to select 1 through 24. Now I also have a base and a composite. We'll use the composite to compare what we want to do, and then we will add the base after we build our page with these blendable layers. So by using this script, when I click open, I'm not going to select any other options, I'm just going to say OK. And Photoshop is going to automatically load them all into position based on the file names I've given them so that you have the essence of the whole page. Now it does not bring in the blend modes um, and I think that's really about, that's all it doesn't bring in is the blend mode. So if in my composite I had used color burn or linear burn or multiply or something like that, you're not, the layer might look darker than the sample. So you just play around to get the effect that you want to make the page work for you. All right, so we're gonna, still loading here. It's almost all done. And it helps you see how the page is built and, and all the different pieces you have to work with. Okay, there we go. That's our last layer. And we've got our whole page here. First thing I'm going to do is save it. I'm going to save as into my working folder. I always save things with um, my initials and a description and a date is helpful too. Okay and I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom here and the bottom layer. So I'm going to click and open the blendable layers and I want to bring in the base paper. So this is the paper that is at the bottom of our composite. So I'm positioning it right in there. Whoops. Nudge it down a little bit. Didn't do it quite as easily as I should have, but this works. Okay, and drag it below the bottom layer. And we were set here. Okay, I'm gonna close that. Now the next thing I like to do is to bring in the photo I'm gonna use. So going up here to this green paint, that's what I envisioned the photo clipping to. When I create most of these blendable layers, you will notice some large masks. And those are generally what are intended to help you bring in the photos to create an artistic look. And I've got a photo I wanna use here, and it is from a trip to New York City. And I'm just going to take it and drag it down and position it all the way to the top, drag it and scale it so it's covering all the green, and then using Option Command and G, I am clipping it to the layer below. Now you can also go to your layers palette and off to the side here, um, instead of release clipping mask, it would say create clipping mask. But that creates it and it blends it right in. And integrates the map pieces and the handwriting and the type. Now I'm going to go back in and do some blending here. I had most of these on Linear Burn. I know you don't know what I've chosen to use, um, but just experiment and that helps you make the project your own. Play around just a little bit. Even what if I didn't do that and instead filled it with white? Well, that might work if I brought it up above my photo. So you can move 
No, maybe not. Um, you can move these layers around to whatever works good for you. I'm going to bring that back. Now, to add a little bit more to this page, I'm going to bring in some elements. But I hope you get the idea here that all these layers are editable, changeable. You could turn them off. You could turn them on. You can duplicate them. You can rotate them. Really endless. Okay, let's see. I'm using the camera cluster layers. And I will link all of these below in the description so you can see them in the shop. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna bring in is the binoculars. Cause why not I'm watching a parade, need some binoculars. Bring these over here to the left. And then below the binoculars, I'm going to grab this film strip. And I'm just using control and clicking, and then I can choose which layer I want. Bring it in here. And this one I'm going to experiment and go linear burn, kind of like color burn. Bring this over here. And then Command J will duplicate my layer. I'm going to bring that up here too. Gives it a little balance to the page. And let's see. I multiply that layer. I'm going to just play around a little bit and see how I can soften the effect. Move this down too. And you know what, I'm gonna move my leaves so that they're not right where my page is. There we go, that works for mine. See, so everything is movable. Nothing's in stone. You can do what you need to do for your own project. And the blendable layers just give you a great starting point. Okay, I'm just, I just want my binoculars, gonna move those over here. Now I want to bring in this ticket because I always love tickets, especially for traveling. They just, they seem like the right kind of ephemera, but not the blue. The blue doesn't really work for me. So command U and I'm going to bring it down to a green, kind of green, yellow. I like that. Command L gives me my levels and I can adjust the intensities here. I want to go darker. And Command M will also bring up my curves and have me adjust my darkness on this. I kind of like how that's turning out. I think that looks nice. And bring in the, let's see, we'll go to the newsprint layer. Let me bring that in. Zoom it up a little bit here. And I'm going to Command J and duplicate it again. Using key commands can make things so much faster. I highly recommend setting up shortcuts and trying to figure out things that make your work process a little easier. Now to add a title to this page, I had grabbed my vintage flashcard traveler with the word city. So that makes sense. And I'm going to scale it down. Put it under, let's put it under the ticket. Okay, now we'll just need to move the newsprint a little bit so I have some room here to journal. And I'm going to add a shadow to this as well. Layer style, drop shadow, there it is. And I like to keep the opacity fairly low. Amp up my size a little bit and give it a little bit more depth with the distance and say, okay, let's see. Does that give me what I want? Pretty much. I'm going to move it over here. And what else? Let's grab the splatters. Those are always fun, but I don't want them in blue. I want them in white. 
So to get white, which is set as my background color, I'm going to shift command and delete. And that's going to fill that layer with white. Command J and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to scale it up a bit. And I think I'm going to duplicate it again, bring it over here. Maybe we're going to rotate it. Add some more artsiness to the page and Command J one more time. Let's try it over here. Yeah, I like it there too. Okay. Now what we need to do to finish the page is simply add some journaling. So I'm going to go down to my um, flashcard and I want the journaling to nestle right in here. So in order to do that, I need to create a custom text path. Because if I just, let me show you here, if I'm just going to click and drag and create my text box, and I'm just going to put some random journaling here right now, text path to journal the story of the memories. And it's set to white, I'm going to set it to gray. I like the typewriter font, so that works. And I'm going to copy and paste to fill it, but you can see it's getting hidden behind the ticket, and I don't want it hidden. I want it to wrap around the ticket. So I'm going to copy all my text. I'm going to delete that box. I'm going to take the pen tool, and I'm going to click. I'm holding down the shift key to get a straight line, and I'm clicking here, creating my shape and connecting it at the end. Then when I take the text tool and hover over it, you see the icons changed from when it's just out here in the square and the circle, so it's contained in the shape. I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna Command V and paste my journaling. Now you can see that it's wrapping around the ticket and none of my journaling is getting hidden below. So looks like I need to kind of adjust my newsprint so that it doesn't interfere so much with the writing. And you can read what my documenting is about. But there you go. It's really that simple. I mean, do, doesn't that make you want to just jump into blendable layers? I would think so. Super easy. I mean, what, I've only been talking a couple minutes and I already have a page done. So I hope you'll give the blendable layers a try and see what kind of artistry you can create too. And I'll see you at katiepartitdesigns.com. And remember, if you like this video, be sure to like it below, click subscribe, and use the notification bell so you'll hear about the next time I add a video. Thanks so much. See you soon.